Hi guys. So I'm just introducing you to my new kit. It's kind of in a funnier box than normal, uh, but it all fits in here and it helps with shipping. Um, so this is a Petri dish art. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty deep mold, about two inches uh, deep. Um, and if you don't know what Petri dish art is, it's kind of like this. Uh, it comes out as pretty thick pucks, but the colors all, especially if you have some negative space in the areas, it really looks quite interesting. Um, I'll show you one that has a lot of negative space. You can see here on the sides how it just kind of drips in. Um, this one though was made with regular um, resin and as you, as you can notice it, it's got a little bit of a yellowy tinge. So I moved to casting resin. So um, with your kit you get your mold. You also get pre-measured resin. So this is casting resin is a two to one resin. So it's two part resin, one part hardener. So this is all pre-measured for you. It's eight ounces of casting, uh, of eight ounces resin and four ounces of hardener. So to mix that, we're gonna first have gloves and some stir sticks. And we're gonna scrape the contents of both of these containers into this big mixing bowl here. And you're gonna stir it slowly because we don't wanna have a lot of air bubbles, slowly for about um, about three minutes at least. So I usually listen to a song and then I, I stop stirring. Okay, so that's that. And, and then you get a collection of colors. I'm not cheap with the colors, I give you quite a bit. So if you do end up liking the, the Petri dish art, you have the mold, you still have colors, all you need is, is more resin. Uh, so, and if you can't find resin that's, you know, like, affordable just come back to me I'll, I'll figure out a price on getting enough for one set anyway okay so that's it we're gonna go right into our tutorial we'll put these back in the box okay so with my mold I can see it's been a little used so first I'm gonna do is mix my resin now um, it takes three minutes and it's like yours is already pre-measured so I don't, I don't think I need to show you how to, to do it but I will just in case. Just for next time when you get your own resin. Okay so um, two parts resin. First I need the gloves. With this glove shortage I'm having a hard time getting gloves for my kits. I seem to be able to find small gloves pretty easily. So you don't if you get them on, it takes a little effort. Okay, so this is the casting resin and I'm gonna put two of these four ounce cups in, in this big mixing thing. You wanna scrape it out. Oh, your kit comes with a puppy pad and an apron. I forgot to throw that in one in there. A puppy pad like I'm using here to catch all the resin. Okay, so that is eight ounces of the casting resin. And for this resin, I don't usually recommend a mask or anything. You might want to use it for this resin. The hardener kind of really stinks. Whoops. You see, that's why I have a puppy pad. Oof, that really stinks. I wish I would have put a mask on. Okay, let's get that in. Let's see if I can scoop some of it. get it off there okay so when I say um, stir slowly I mean like stir slowly like this you don't want to be folding in any air bubbles now I don't know how well you can see in there but there, it's kind of stringy mucusy almost and we have to make sure that that is all um, incorporated so we have to stir until it's clear basically 
Okay, so I'm just going to slowly stir this for three minutes. I'm not going to make you watch me all, do all that. I'm just going to pause you. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm done mixing. Um, there are some air bubbles in here, but you can see through the cup, it's clear. So with the air bubbles, when it's two inches thick, it's hard to, to get all the air bubbles to come up. So we're going to pour a little bit at a time. So I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to pour it about half full on each one. A, a, a torch is essential for this or a heating gun. So this is not the kind of art to do without a torch. Okay, so I'm going to torch it as soon as I find my said torch. Okay, so when you torch it, you want to stay away from these edges here. You want to just try to go in the middle. Now, I am going to pause you again. We are going to let this sit for two minutes. So put a timer on or something for yourself, but two minutes is the time that we're going to torch it again and then add our second layer. Okay guys, the next thing we want to do is put a little bit of silicone around these edges. So I also will provide that in the kit, though it wasn't really shown too much. This kit is just coming out. I've just gotten these molds and um, so this kit is new for me. All right, so with your finger, you just, Take a little silk. You can do this with a Q-tip too, but I like to do it with a finger so that I can feel where there's still some resistance. You're just going around the corner. You're not going down into the resin. And we're doing this before we put in our second layer of resin. Okay, so done that. Now I've got to torch it one more time and then we'll last add the rest of the, the uh, resin. It's hard to see if there's any air bubbles in here. Um, that will, will make, is what will make your resin be a little bit cloudy instead of clear. So I'm just... Adding the rest here. Oof. Okay, so I'm going to torch again. Now I'm also going to wait another two minutes to torch it one more time and then we get to have fun. I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm back. Uh, it's been two minutes, so I'm going to torch these one last time. Can see some of them popping up okay so the, the product that makes these kind of uh, petri dish art is something called ink sinker so it sinks it's what sinks the resin down apparently some people can even use um, white pinata white Pin all the inks you have are this pinata brand this is my dirty one, but all the ones you have is this piñata brand, which is important because uh, you, you need the piñata or any other color of 
straight alcohol ink. You don't want the ones that are got um, the micro powders or anything, or you don't want acrylic, acrylic um, ink, which is pretty common. I had a hard time. I bought a lot of different inks before I realized that um, there's only two two brands that I know of that are that are reliably alcohol ink. So that's the Pinata brand and Tim Holtz, I believe, is the other one. Uh, what is it? You know, my eyesight is so terrible, I can't even can't really see it. But it's this brand here, and I don't even think it has the name. Okay, so we're going to start here with pink, purple, and blue. So what you do, that's what you want to do is pick out your colors first, obviously. And you get your colors ready and your ink sinker ready. So, say we put a couple blues. Okay, and then we want to follow each blue up with the ink sinker. Otherwise, if you don't put ink sinker, what happens is the, the resin, I mean the, the alcohol ink will just sit on top of the resin and just spread out. The ink sinker, as you can see there, it's kind of making it go down. Now, I'm going to try and keep some negative space here. And before I get, a, get going too far, I'm going to put a drop of Resi Blast. I just am curious to know what will happen if I put in a drop of Resi Blast. So, this is a product... I use it often for making lacing effect on the beach scenes. Um, I include it in all the beach kits that, that I give out. Um, so it it is a little bit more on the expensive side. Uh, so, well, for me, I pay $50 a bottle. That's quite a bit, but that's ordering from Canada because I haven't found a Canada Canadian retailer that carries it. So, yeah, I spent a lot for it. So we're going to just do one little drop. It is a resin disperser. So what it'll do is it'll spread and spread and spread, and it will push the resin away. You can't really see it because it's clear. Um, we'll probably notice it more as we go. Or we might not even notice it as we're doing this. We might notice it at the end, like when we unmold. Might be a cool effect. No way to know until you do it. For the blue again. Okay, so I'm just going to do one more little bit of, one more thing of pink, sorry, pink. Wow, look at that moving. Holy. I don't even know where to put this sinker. You're so big on me. And I think I'll do one more purple and then I'll leave it. And I'm leaving these edges clear because I like clear edges because you can see inside. And it, if you put less alcohol ink, you um, may even be able to see it from the top, the different, the cool things that happen. Okay, so I'm going to close off these ones. I'm done with the pink and the blue. And I'm going to try just straight gold and black in this one. So... Work. So also the gold is pinata brand. I love it, the pinata. Just for like not not necessarily for these, but for any other kind of resin art, I love this brand of inks. Okay, so I'm gonna start with black. I'll just do a whites or the ink sinker and 
Now, as I mentioned about this resi blast, look at in there. It is clear right there. Okay, so I'm going to do the gold. Oftentimes, the gold will kind of sit right on the top here. And so I'm going to try and put some of this extra so it'll sink a little bit better. And I'm going to cover them with black, hopefully, hoping that they go down. Okay, more. Putting a lot more ink sinker than I need um, because of the gold. It's probably going to turn out just mostly black and gray, to be honest. It's kind of cool watching this. It's like uh, almost a chemistry experiment the the ink is moving and the resin is moving and yeah it's kind of cool okay I think that's all I'll do there and then and in this one I want to add red to it so uh, black and gold and I'm gonna add this kind of cranberry color so I'm gonna just start with gold because it is the easy, the hardest to sink, so might as well just get it all over the place and try and sink it. Okay, so I'm going to go for the cranberry color, I guess this. Okay, now we'll do some black. So just know that the more you add layers of color, um, the, the more you'll kind of get big pops of color. If you kind of want to leave edges where you can see things, um, then a little bit less. I'm just going to do, whoops, one more of the red. And I'm, whoops, did I put black and forget to see a bunch of black. I don't remember putting it on though. Okay, so I'm just going to do this one little last layer of the red. in the last ink dropper okay so this one looks really weird do you see where I put the resin it's just kind of like just looking really weird I want to put one color in the, in the middle of it and see what it does. So, see here. What is going to happen to it? One more ink sink and then I'll leave it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for these, um, and then I'll come back um, in two days. It takes two whole days to dry, 
uh, you probably want, will want to put something on top of it to cover it from any um, dust or any hairs or anything like that. It does have to sit for a complete two days before it dries. Re regular resin, no, but with casting resin, um, it does have to sit for two days. So just find something to cover it. I'm going to cover mine and we'll come back when it's, uh, when it's time to unveil these. And uh, thank you for watching. Well, I'll probably say that in a minute, but thank you anyway. Um, I hope you have um, either tried Petri Dish Art or you're going to try it or maybe you've bought one of my kits and you're trying it. It's really fun. It's kind of like, it's not one of those hard arts. It's not like making some perfect geode or some perfect uh, art resin piece. This is really just easy. You just pour in the resin after you've stirred it, you torch it a couple times, and then you drip colors on top of it. It's just, it's almost therapeutic. Anyway, that is our, concludes our video until the unveiling, and I'll see you then. Hi guys, so I'm unveiling my Petri dish art that I did. Um, it's been more than a couple days, I just haven't gotten back to it, but do you see this? It looks like cotton candy. This is where we put that drop of, of uh, Resi Blast. I wonder if it looks like that on, on the other side. Oh, dang. Look, it just looks like a normal one. Maybe if I would have put the Resi Blast down on the top or in a half a layer, I would have gotten this kind of cool looking effect. I think that's kind of neat looking. It's hard to pick up on camera, but... It is pretty cool. Anyway, this is what it looked like. This is pink, purple, blue with the um, drop. They're kind of, I'm getting a pair of these colors together now. All right, so next one was just black and gold, I believe. Oh, I don't like this one. I mean, it's okay. It's just this. Got no negative space that I wanted, and it just, I don't know, I don't like the way it dispersed. It just looks like, like, gray. So the other one I had done before this kit came out a little bit better. I had a little bit of negative space here and here, and through the negative space, you could really see what's going on with the colors. How they, they actually are little tiny lines. The colors kind of just... I don't know how well you can see it, but there's the colors just run in this little line. Um, no, the other ones I had almost had like a beach like look. Not really because not because of the colors, but just seeing if I can find it. So this one, this one has some negative space. I think it's more interesting than the other one. Oh, sorry, my. Okay, there we go. So this one has a little bit of negative space. I don't know how well you can see in there. Probably not well at all. Um, but it is much more cool to look at. Kind of even mesmerizing, my husband said. So, you know, I would suggest trying to leave a little bit of negative space. This one has, quote, a fair bit of negative space. And this one I only poured, like, about an inch thick. Um, just to make it more coaster size and this one also looks kind of pretty cool um even from both sides well i thought i think it looks cool anyway there we go let me see okay is it okay all right so the last one was black gold and red right so black gold and red yep and when i do have negative space here I even look like I have a snail in this one little spot. I can get this focused. So I, I do like this one a little bit better, but still, I think I use too much color because it's kind of just covered in color and it's not, I mean, the color separated and it, it does look nice. Um, and there is some pretty cool effects in, in this side. Um, and I keep telling myself next time I do these, I'm going to, to add more color and or less color and I always end up doing too much color so 
that's this tutorial. And remember, what's really important is to put the silicone around the edges. I just had another video that I was shooting where the where the mold didn't come out of the silicone, and I actually have silicone left on the actual mold. So see right here was a tray mold, and then the silicone mold is left here and here and here. Um, I did not use silicone in that mold to go around the edges here. I wish I had. So, you know, if you think that's a step that you could just skip, you're going to end up ruining your mold. Maybe not the first time or the second time, but eventually you'll end up ruining your mold um, because that will happen. It's just, it's just if you pour it a little bit too deep in it just goes over a little bit it's just yeah it's a mess so just that is an important thing I want you to take away from this video with all future molds just around the surface corner here not all the way down just around here put a little line of silicone and um, hopefully that won't happen to you okay so that's the end of this video any questions comments uh, just leave them for me and I'll get to them. You can email me at carrie at the art of the poor dot ca and um, you can like me on my Facebook page and follow me if you if you like at the art of the poor um, is, is that and I'm on Etsy uh, also the art of the poor and that's P-O-U-R um, and subscribe to my page. Um, I haven't added videos in quite a while but I'm getting more into the videos uh, and so there'll be more um, updated a little bit more often. So anyway, thank you for joining me and I hope to hear from you and see your art. Please post your art to me. I'd love to see everybody's results. So I do have an art group on my Facebook page. So the Art of the Poor, you go to my groups and then you will see um, the art corner. That's what it's called. And I love it when people could join and just share their artwork, what they've done, either with my kits or without my kits. Um, you know, it's a great place to share, get advice, opinions, or anything like that. So please um, join me there and show me what you come up with. Thanks. Bye.